From dour dark horse to formidable favorite, France is agape over the meteoric rise of François Fillon. We're in the week between a first round of center-right primaries and next Sunday's runoff, where Nicolas Sarkozy's former prime minister is on track to seal the deal against the more moderate Alain Juppé, ahead of a televised Thursday debate. Does France really fall for a Catholic conservative who professes his love for Margaret Thatcher and taking an axe to half a million civil service jobs? With the left in tatters, after Brexit and Trump, Sunday's primary runoff seems like a dry run for the real thing in France next spring, with the prospect that whoever wins uh, this time around will face the National Front's Marine Le Pen in the presidential election. Can either Fillon or Juppé beat her? While France's far right makes political hay out of its pivot to a long-live-the-welfare state mantra, will fears of globalization play in her favor? Or are the French more conservative than we think, whereas U.S. and U.K. voters perhaps took a gambler's fancy a flutter attitude to their vote? France's strong urge to kick out the bums is real, but it's countered by an aversion to risk-taking. So who in the end, what in the end, will decide the election? Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at the battle for France's right. And with us, uh, François Fillon campaign advisor, François Bouvard. Good evening. Who's been with the movements, what you said, for three years? Oh, for years, since the very beginning. Since the very beginning. Thank you for joining us. Jérémy Patrelletus, representative uh, for the youth movement, for Alain Juppé. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks as well uh, to uh, Angela Diffley from Sister Station Radio France International's right. English Language Service. Welcome back. And we say hello to Nathalie Janson, who teaches at the Naomia Business School. Hello. We're going we're gonna to break down a bit the economics uh, yes. here and, and whether or not the French have the stomach for either proposal uh, yeah. uh, a little bit later on. The France Van Gat debate where you can join the conversation and you have already on Facebook and Twitter. Hashtag F24 debate. It's all going too fast. In France, voters feel globalization has brought nothing but unemployment and terrorism, the two issues listed as most important uh, to those questioned in exit polls after last Sunday's first round of center-right primaries. The man to assuage their fears, who garnered 44% in that first round, seems best suited to uh, win on Sunday. L'état d'urgence est partout. The state of emergency is everywhere against the totalitarianism of the Islamic State group which has declared war against us in Europe, paralyzed by Brexit and the lack of leadership and vision. Here in France, the emergency is economic, social, financial, safety, existential. Our destiny is wavering between decline and ascent. The only thing we can do is to tap into our capacity to work more, all of us, and spend less. François Bouvard, did I hear right? Did he just say that France faces an existential threat? I think that's right, absolutely. And, um, and uh, we, we see that today with uh, the public debt that we have, which is almost 100% of GDP, uh, with the threat of the raise of the interest rate, uh, with the unemployment, which is at 10%, uh, people are concerned, and there is an existential, uh, you know, debate as well that needs to be uh, put Isn't on the table. Isn't overblowing it a little bit? I mean, an existential threat? I think that's right. You know, um, uh, it's threatening the prosperity of the country. It's threatening the capacity of the country to be uh, leading in Europe. So that's right. Yeah. Of course, he had a shot when he was prime minister, uh, the early days of the financial crisis. Uh, at the time, he proposed a, a measures to slash the budget, uh, but they were labeled as timid. They were not timid. I think the scope was not large enough because basically the, um, uh, the uh, spending review was done on the central state, which is uh, a bit more than 12% you know, of the total public spending, while it should have been on the whole scope of the public spending. Jérémy Patrelletus, do you agree with the message that you heard about France being under threat, uh, the, at war with ISIS, the existential threat that's coming and, and the, the yeah. economic situation. We shared in the light is that France needs reforms, need to be, like, needs to be reformed, whether it, it's in economics and like different scope of the society. I think that Alain Juppé disagrees uh, with Francois Fillon when it comes like, to the scope of the reform, um, to 
the number of them. Uh, you talk about the public servants. Alain Juppé saying that 250,000 is like more realistic. So I think they both agree on the vision that France needs to be reformed. They just disagree on how fast you go and how you know, deep you, you go into this reform. Uh, is it as black as it seems, Angel Diffley? Uh, on, on the economy, they, they actually have very similar uh, economically liberal uh, programs, apart from the 250,000 public sector and jobs which would be cut under Juppé, half a million under under François Fillon. He's often, and he has said he admires Ma Margaret Thatcher, and there are comparisons to be made there. Good luck to him if he manages mm -hmm. to reduce 500,000 uh, public sector jobs in France. That would be almost a fair comparison with Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> facing down the miners in the 18-month miner strike. Uh, otherwise, he hasn't proposed tax cuts, tax cuts. There are areas where he's very a different. Tax cut, um, a wealth tax cut, okay. yes, which they both have uh, uh, favoured, I think, both Juppé and Fillon. That's very much uh, in, would be welcomed by the constituency. They are trying to attract the uh, But is that going to win well on the National Front Republican. voters a wealth tax cut? It, it is probably not their most attractive um, measure for National Front voters, but I think they're hoping that the rest, the immigration issues, the issues surrounding uh, integration of Muslims in France, that they will draw National Front voters. All right. Slashing 500,000 jobs from a state payroll is a pledge that's got, uh, as you just heard, Francois Fillon's rival on the offensive. Let's listen to Alain Juppé. Does he really want nurses in French hospitals to work 39 hours and be paid for 37? If that's the case, with no recruitment for five years, quite simply, it's not going to happen. Nathalie Janson, your, your thoughts on this pledge of slashing? You know, we, we've often done shows on this very set about how unreformable France is. But to slash half a million jobs, is that a vote getter? Uh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think it's uh, it's it's considering the the French and, and the, the the conservative way, and they and the, they really like the uh, the the welfare state, and they they are quite of uh, kind of pride of their welfare state as well. I'm not so sure you're going to succeed on that. Um, of course, this is a primary, right? So, yeah, it's a so primary. So speaking to voters from the right and the center right. Yes. So, so will that work with those voters? Uh, yeah, I would say yeah, uh, because they, it's what they, they believe that the, if the French state wants to survive in the in the long run, it really needs to get uh, a, a deep reform, and that goes through uh, the slashing of uh, public servant, the number of public servant, and you do that only if uh, if you reform at the same time the private uh, the job market, the private job market, because if you don't hire as much public servant, then it means that you hired private sector. So, you so need that to means do, what, reducing payroll taxes, this kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. You definitely need to do both at the same time because otherwise it doesn't work because you, you can't, uh, yeah. All right, on the hashtag F24 debate, big debate tonight. RE conservative French primaries, Juppé can still flip the tables. Fillon's plan is radical, bold, but is it feasible? Yeah, it's feasible. And, and by the way, it's not about pleasing the voters. It's about doing what's right for the country. And I don't agree with what Mr. Juppé said, because we are not going to freeze uh, hiring in public sector. If you look at the next five years, you've got 1.1 1 million, 1 .1 million uh, uh, civil servants being uh, contractual or fonctionnaires who are going to leave. Okay, That's a natural leave. So we are talking about you know, not replacing 500,000 out of 1 million point one. So it means we will be still recruiting 600,000 to renew, you know, the workforce of the civil servants. The police, yeah, for instance, still smarting from what they say was the, 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 the lessening of, uh, uh, of their payroll under the, under the government of Nicolas Sarkozy and François Fillon. We will not reduce the headcount of the police. And uh, it's, we will increase the, pay, the, the, the headcount in justice, for example. So it will be different than was what was done in 2007, because it will not be one out of two across the board, but on targeted uh, administrations. That's actually, yeah. that's not made very clear. No, right? exactly. I, think. And I, I think don't think people are fully aware that the police yeah. force... No, if I may, like... It, 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 it's very clear if no. you read the programme. If I may... Yeah, but Fillon, if he hopes to win, needs to get Fillon that out there. There are so many questions, and I think tonight he will be able to answer it, but 
in the first place, he said that it would be public servants. And now you said that it also includes contractual people, which is kind of different. So on, on many different issues, same thing for VAT. He started by saying that you will increase the VAT by 3.5. And then now it's two, it's two, two points. So, so there is a need for clarification because like a policeman or a nurse, it's not a contractual, it's a public servant. Let, so you let, have to let me address this point. Yeah. We always said that we would reduce the workforce in the public sector, okay, by uh, 550,000. Uh, 500, so this is, you know, clear from the beginning. And as we all know, you know, in civil servants, you've got people who are fonctionnaires titular and you've got people under contract. And actually, if you look at the way to reduce the workforce in, in the public sector in many countries, the only way to do it is to go from the status of fonctionnaire to contractual. So this is the way we go. On the VAT... So, so you wait a minute, you're saying make, make um, job security uh, more precarious for things like teachers and uh, postmen it's, and, it's, and this kind it's, of thing? It's not a question of precarity. Uh, if you take defense in France for many, many years, you know, the military have been contractual, okay? It's not precarity, you know? It's contracts that can be extended for many years. It's a matter of not having a status that puts you in the civil service forever and to pay the pensions forever. So yeah, it's a matter of managing the workforce. Then it has to be clear. We, the question was right. Will we have teachers? policemen and nurses that would be contractual. That's a debate. I mean, he has to go in these issues and answer them. And I, would add so, and I would add something. As a prime minister over his entire term between 2007 and 2012, Francois Fillon as a prime minister, he cuts only 100,000, a little bit more jobs. So I that, actually there is a question think about that. Those people watching tonight don't really care whether it's half a million or 250,000. Either way, it's a lot for France. Either way, there will be a huge fuss about it. And it's much more about sending a signal uh, than actually the numbers uh, which are cut or not cut. I don't think that's a deciding issue. I think there is a difference. And it's you, public sector workers vote overwhelmingly yeah, yeah, uh, for the yeah. Socialist Party, not for the Républicain. N Nathalie Janson, we saw a little bit of a teeny weeny flutter in the unemployment figures uh, that were announced this uh, Thursday. A slight dip, but of course, those numbers, what, we still have, what, more than 3.2 million people uh, without a job uh, in this country. Is that, is it hopeless? Is that something endemic? No, it's it's just um, it's just what you have when you you choose a a kind of a welfare state, and in our country we we I think we we've been voting so far for helping for we we better like um, paying someone not doing a certain kind of job than just uh, having someone working. So it's really a different view. I think we really have that difference with the Anglo-Saxon view. We rather like having someone at home, not uh, not having a job, uh, instead of g getting a job, even if it's low-paid job, but still paid. So you have that that debate with the uh, we call that the uh, revenu universel. You know the the income to for give everyone. A yeah. yeah, minimum. The minimum, and, and and this is the same debate. Uh, or, or you 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 think that uh, the it's better for someone to get a job and be inserted in the in the in the job market, and can be compensated for the fact that is is get is getting a low pay payroll. Or uh, you think that it's it's not a good thing, and you and you 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 like him better to stay home, and so far we we like the second option. Uh, voters and politicians blaming that high unemployment figure, yes, on uh, the bureauc paperwork and, and bureaucratic okay. system, but they also blame it on immigrants saying the immigrants are coming and taking our jobs away. No, I think this is definitely not the issue. And, uh, and the immigrants, uh, you know, debate uh, is a debate which is purely within the Front National, not anywhere else. No, the point is that uh, we've got to be serious that if there is, uh, if we want to have a productive state and welfare, we need to create wealth. And the point is that we need to jumpstart the economy because we had a very low growth over the past years while other countries, uh, Germany, UK and others, had a higher growth. So we need to do something to get out of, uh, you know, the French malediction on employment, which is, you know, it's very, it's very clear. We've got, to, we've got to restore competitiveness. So it means cutting charges and the taxes on the companies. We've got to have a more flexible workforce and more flexible uh, labor law. And we need to do that very quickly to 
kick off and jumpstart, you know, the economy. And then the jobs will be created. And then we will have, you know, taxes coming in and then we can pay welfare. François Bouvard, there was one time an experiment where uh, a, a French government did try to do that. It was mm. 1986. Mm -hmm. uh, the then prime minister, Jacques Chirac, uh, privatized a bunch of companies, uh, uh, decided to shake up the system. Of course, he got routed at the next election. Well, it's not an issue of getting, getting re-elected. It's an issue of, you know, doing what's right for the country. And François Fillon is clear about the priorities. It's, you know, transforming the economic and the social model of France for the future to get back in the race of globalization, to make sure that we've got the protection and that we can create the wealth so that we can protect the people. Against globalization or its ill effects, uh, Jérémy Patrieletus, what does Alain Juppé have that François Fillon doesn't? I think he has this vision that now there is kind of two Frances. And as a youth supporter, I mean, we, we really see that there is like a, a youth and a friend that takes benefits of the globalization that is open to the world. And you have another friend, a more rural one, that actually voted more for François Fillon last Sunday that doesn't benefit from globalization and like as a need for, for protection. And Alain Juppé, and it has been his entire vision and it's his vision and ambition for France, said that he wants to reconcile this, this, these two frenzies that and it was this concept of happy identity, identité heureuse, which, which was mocked. But actually, it was not a bad concept. What does it mean? It's not the state of now. It was an objective. It was a vision for France to reconcile these two Frances. Because you cannot have one that takes benefit of globalization and one that just, you know, is scared and doesn't benefit from it. Where have you seen that François Fillon was dividing the people? I don't, I don't get that. I mean, you know, you, you, take, you take the program of François Fillon, and it's uh, for the elder, for the youth, it's for people in rural areas, it's for people in the, in, in, in the cities. So I don't see where the divide is. But, uh, but many people, and again, uh, uh, one of the far right successes is tapping into voters who used to vote for the left and who like the social safety net, and they have the feeling that François Fillon is going to take that away. Well, the safety net, you've got to be able to afford it. So if you don't create wealth in a country, if you don't restore the economy, you will not have any wealth to distribute. Yeah, but we share this vision. I mean, they are both from the right wing. And I think I disagree with you. French people are ready for reform. They are ready. I mean, unemployment for the youth people is 25%. In Germany, it's 9%. So, I mean, as a youth, and I, we talk to a lot of youth people, actually, and they are willing to change. They understand that companies are the ones creating jobs. Where we disagree, and where Alain Juppé and François Fillon disagree, is just, as I said, the scope of the reform, the speed of them, and they're like, Kind of All right, when we come back, we'll talk about this and the issue of values. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.